My name is Doug Hugerborst. I'm here with Business Impact, and we are here in the second of a series of five videos uh, for what is EPM, and uh, you know what value do I have if I'm a Ross customer and I'm running EPM. Um, this is uh, the video is really more about definition. We're going to get us all on the same page. Uh, first thing, we, of course, you do in any kind of definition video is you know what are the common language, what what are the terms that we're using. From there, I'm going to talk about the components and parts of EPM. I'm going to talk about what is licensed, and I'm also going to talk about what does your maintenance pay for. And of course, you know, at the end of all this, if I have EPM, do I have anything worth saving? Is there, or should I just start from scratch? The answer is no. There are things worth saving, and we want to talk to you about that. Now, first thing, EPM. What the heck does that mean? It means Enterprise Performance Management. Really, it's it's BI. It's Ross's version of BI. Business intelligence. Now, BI or business intelligence really is a, kind of a, a cloud term. It, it can mean anything from reports to ad hoc analysis to dashboards to drill throughs to alerting. Um, there's all kinds of area that BI gets into, but it's not just about one particular area. It's not sales reporting. It's across your enterprise. Hence, why they named it EPM, Enterprise Performance Management. Another term I'm going to use later is E. TL, extract, transform, and load. That's moving of data around. Some software that's embedded in EPM. There's a tool called Wearscape. That is the data warehousing design tool. And there's a tool called Target. And Target is your uh, visualization tool. It's also known to you if you have EPM as EPM Viewer. EPM Viewer and Target are the same piece. Now last, a term called Cube. It's a multi-dimensional object. The whole point of BI and, and staging all this is to organize your data in a way that you can slice and dice on different dimensions, whether it's customer, product, time, sales rep, factory, warehouse. And so Target reads a cube, Wearscape feeds the cube, and that's how it kind of works. Now, uh, anytime that we do business intelligence, we have three steps. The first step is making data. That making of the data is what Ross does. Um, it could be that you also have data that's made by getting data from exterior to your organization, EDI feeds. Could be um, other invoices, or maybe you have sell through. You sell to someone, they sell it on, and you get that information. Could be budgets, could be some kind of goals. Could be demand planning. That's not necessarily directly in Ross, it's a separate system. Now, that data gets made, it's in an organizational structure that's made to collect it. What we have to do is we actually organize it. I call it staging the data. Um, that is the organizational piece. That's where Wearscape comes in. That's where we do the ETL. We're gonna organize it in a way that makes it easier for reporting as opposed to collecting. Some people call it data warehouse. Some people call it data mart. Um, if you're talking to the folks with Click or other tools, they say you don't need a data warehouse, but ultimately you do need your data staged. You're going to end up pulling your budget in. You're going to end up trying to marry a budget that might be at a region level with your sales that are at a customer level. Something has to map those two together. It's not just a map when you get to that level. The last step, and this is the step that's the real exciting part, that's why it's in blue, is displaying the data. Now, displaying the data is what Target does best. It's the ability to, to slice and dice it. You can have dashboards, you can have views and reports, but sometimes displaying the data is not just in the format that you look at it in, but it's also in the form, whether you're getting it on your phone, or whether you're getting it in your email, or whether you're getting it, how you're getting it, soon on your Apple iWatch, I suppose. But um, that displaying section also inc includes security. It also includes um, projections. It also includes data modeling or some level of data mining. So those are the three steps in EPM that you have that's going on coming out of your Ross system. So here's a very quick uh, graphic that talks about it. From left to right, we can see the data sources. It comes into this red area. That's the data warehouse. Create this orange cube. And then the orange cube is fed into the display. Now, what did you license? Now, that's a little different. Now, we've talked about the steps. The EPM viewer or target is the display tool. 
um, the EPM viewer version is designed only to display ROS data. So if you wanted to bring in external data, if you have, uh, uh, I say ROS, really should say Appian data at this point. Um, if you want to display other data, you need to extend that license to a full target license. Wearscape, the tool that does the staging, is again licensed primarily for only ROS data. It's, it's licensed for you to have someone who's a licensed Wearscape practitioner, which we happen to be, um, make the changes. You are not fully licensed to go in and change everything. Uh, you also have a piece that's licensed for the ETL, the design of taking the data from here and making it available here. This, this design of pulling from ROS and organizing and all, that's the ETL, that's licensed. And then of course the Cube is licensed as well. Now of course ROS and Appian, are, even though they charge you maintenance on that, aren't exactly going forward on full development of that. If you have a new ROS version, you're gonna be kind of stuck. They're not gonna upgrade that for you. Um, so those things are licensed and not really going to be getting much maintenance value for them. And hence, what does your maintenance pay for? Now, on the display side, Target upgrades or creates upgrades for you every three months. There's generally four releases a year, one big release and three hot fixes. Um, EPM is going to be stuck at 2K11 as far as we can tell. You are not even going to get to 2013. Um, they're just basically saying, hey, we've got click now. Wearscape, which is the tool that we use to organize and stuff, it's also stuck or at that license level. So your maintenance isn't really, even though Wearscape continues to improve this product, you're not getting the benefit of that. And of course, the staging logic is not gonna be improved any longer. So really, if you're paying maintenance on EPM right now, you should consider that that's not exactly gonna get you the highest value for that, for that dollar. Do I have anything worth saving? Well, of course you do, because the Wearscape tool is continues to improve and does allow for faster uh, changes of your warehouse and such. The Target tool has come out with release 2014 at this point. Um, those tools can be uplifted if you can just, uh, just basically migrate from an EPM license to a full license. Um, the ETL portion that Ross is charging you for I'm not so sure there's a lot to save there. We can, we can work with it and build off of it. Uh, we have our own versions as well. Uh, I'm sure there are other folks that do, but uh, you know, I, we'll support what they have, but I don't think I would pay maintenance anymore on that. And that leads us to uh, who are we? Just real fast, we were started in 2005. We focus on the fact that it takes, you have to understand business to build business intelligence. I've worked at Ross, I was there in 2003 when I helped start EPM, and we work with more than 100 customers worldwide. Thanks again for your time. I know it was really quick. My name is Doug Hugerborst, and if you have any questions, call me or Eric. Uh, we'd be happy to talk to you.